guys, welcome back, Mom and Dr. Jones on YouTube, and today we are talking about contraception. I am going to go through birth control options just in a general overview, how I would discuss this in my clinic, and hopefully at some point we can hit on some more in-depth questions that I'm sure will come up about all the different kinds of options. <laughs> I really like to use a chart from bedsider.org, which is a website that has excellent evidence-based resources on birth control. I am not affiliated with them in any way. I am just a giant fangirl. I actually have a t-shirt and was just thinking, I don't know why I'm doing this discussion in this shirt when I could be wearing theirs. That makes no sense. I really like them. You should check them out. If you have any questions about birth control, it's probably on their website. Anyway, so usually in this discussion, I kind of start at the bottom of this chart, which says that over the course of a year, women who are sexually active with no form of birth control, that means not preventing pregnancy in any way, have about a 90% chance of pregnancy. That means really good chances if you want a baby and really terrible chances if you don't want a baby. So we should probably use some kind of contraception if we would really like to not be pregnant at this point in our lives. So here are the tiers of birth control. We're gonna start at the bottom where they have the highest failure rates and move on up to the top where the failure rates are lower. The bottom row is going to talk about things like condoms, things like pulling out or withdrawal, things like trying to avoid having sex on days that you're ovulating, things like diaphragms, which almost nobody uses anymore and you would have a hard time probably finding someone to fit you for one. These are essentially barrier method and timing methods of birth control. And the reason their failure rate is slightly higher, uh, quite a bit higher than other forms of birth control is because their propensity for human error is higher. So you might be somewhere and not have a condom. The condom might break. You might forget to use the condom. You might just in the moment decided you didn't want to. All of these are bad ideas if you're using condom for your birth control. They're also bad ideas if you're using condoms to prevent STDs, but they are the reason that birth control methods like condoms and pulling out and trying not to have sex when you are ovulating have a higher failure rate. The second tier of birth control, this is hormonal birth control, which is used in a fashion that requires frequent oversight. So the three you see here, birth control pills, the birth control vaginal ring, and birth control patch are all essentially the same thing. These are the same thing, combined hormonal contraceptions, estrogen and progesterone included in those, in different delivery forms. So one is a pill that you take by mouth every day, one is a vaginal ring that you can place using a tampon applicator or just place yourself with your fingers if you would like to do that. But the tampon applicator trick is super cool. And the patch, which is a little sticker like thing that goes on the arm or the hip or belly, wherever you want it really, and works for a week at a time. So the pill you take it by mouth every day, the patch you change once a week as a sticker and the ring you change once a month and have a period while it's out. They are more reliable than things like condoms and pulling out and trying to avoid having sex when you're pregnant because they are slightly less reliant on somebody using them exactly correctly. Their failure rate is going to be a little bit higher than birth control methods, which we call long-acting reversible contraceptives. You have to remember to take your pill every day. You have to remember to replace your neuvering once a month. You have to remember to change your patch once a week. And if you don't do that or you're late doing that, then it increases the risk of pregnancy. Another form of birth control that's kind of on this middle tier is Depo-Provera. This is a medroxy injection. It's an intramuscular injection that you get every three months. It is slightly more reliable as birth control than things like the pill and the patch because you only have to remember it every three months. Not significantly higher though. And it is a injectable progesterone. There's also a progesterone only pill, which you can take that is safe with breastfeeding. So those are two options that kind of fall in the same category as combined or estrogen and progesterone hormonal contraception 
but they have only progesterone in them. Estrogen is a medicine that is not safe to take while breastfeeding. So if somebody is breastfeeding and needs a hormonal contraception, we refer them to progesterone only types. There are positives and negatives of each of these types of birth control. And I am often asked, what kind of pill do you like? What birth control is the best? What do you recommend to people? And that's not as easy as I like this one or I recommend that one because it's very individualized. It will depend on what the person's goals are, what the person's fears are, what the person's concerns are, and then we have to go from there. So if somebody wants to be able to change the dosing in their estrogen or progesterone, then the birth control pill is better because the NuvaRing and the patch, although they are both estrogen and progesterone based birth controls, I can't adjust the doses in them because there's really only one formulation of each of those. But if somebody is on a pill, I have hundreds of options if they're having side effects to change either the type of progesterone or the dose of estrogen. And that would be a good topic for another discussion at some point is what we change if you're having side effects on your birth control, how do we come to a decision about what you might try instead? This top tier of birth control are what we call LARC or long acting reversible contraceptives. They include things like the progesterone IUD, Mirena, Kylena, Skyla, things like that. They include the copper IUD, which is called Paragard, if you use the brand name. They include the implant that goes in the arm, which is called Nexplanon. You place it in the clinic, we use some numbing medicine. It's like a little silicone rod, it's about this big, like a few inches, and we put it in the arm, and that is a three-year birth control that just stays in the arm and you don't have to think about it for three years. The IUDs range anywhere from three years to 10 years, depending on the type. And then the other one that's on this tier is getting your tubes tied, which is obviously an extremely effective form of birth control, but not reversible. So long acting reversible contraceptives like IUDs, Nexplanon, and that's all of them. I don't know why I'm saying three because it's IUDs and Nexplanon are as effective at pregnancy prevention as getting your tubes tied, but they are reversible. The failure rate for those is less than 1%. So less than one in 100 women who have those as birth control will get pregnant using them. That's not zero. The only form of birth control which is completely effective, 0% pregnancy rate is abstinence or not having sex with somebody of the opposite sex. So you have to rely on your birth control as much as possible, but there is a failure rate for every type of birth control. Importantly, with any birth control discussion, you must still use a condom to prevent STDs. None of these forms of birth control will prevent sexually transmitted diseases and condoms are still important even if you're not using them for birth control. Do you hear me? Don't forget. I feel like I have enough content ideas to last this channel at least the next 36 years. So if you would like to hang out, you should subscribe. And if you learned something, you should like this video. Be kind to each other, be kind to yourself, be kind to me in the comments, be kind, just be kind.